Who would win if a Roman gladiator and a ninja from ancient Japan fought against each other? What makes this duel exciting is the fact that these two professions could hardly differ more from each other. While gladiators performed in front of thousands of people, a shinobi was always keen to remain undetected while performing his missions. The equipment that they used couldn't be more different either, because in addition to ordinary swords, both ninja and gladiators also had rather unusual weapons that you could not find on normal battlefields. Although shinobi were saboteurs, spies, and assassins, for this video we assume that he faces the gladiator in a one versus one fight, since a comparison would otherwise not be possible. But before we take a closer look at the two, let me know who you think would win. Write it in the comments and vote. I'm excited to see the results. There have been a variety of different types of gladiators that have evolved over the centuries, but for this comparison we'll only use the most famous ones that were most often seen in the arena. This includes Retarius, armed with a trident and a throwing net with which he could disarm or catch opponents. Thraex, who had a Sika, a curved sword with a single-edged blade and also carried a shield. The Skizzer was armed with the Gladius, a sword sword that he held in his right hand. His left forearm was in a tube with a crescent blade projecting from it. The Hoplomachus had a medium-length, light-thrust lance in the right hand and a short sword together with a small round shield in the left hand. Mermillo was equipped with a short sword and a large, domed shield just like the soldiers of the Roman army. The secular genus had the same armament, but a different helmet to counter the Retarius throwing net. The Provocator also had a rectangular shield and a short sword, but unlike the previous two, he also had a crescent-shaped breastplate. And then there was the Equus, who, unlike the other classes, wore a tunic and started the fight with a lance and a shield on horseback before continuing on foot with a sword and a shield. As you can see, there was already a large selection of different weapons among the main gladiator types. Most of them, however, had a short range, and ranged weapons were only used by lesser-known and rarely used genres such as the archer Sagittarius. The shinobi, however, had many more different weapons at their disposal, including some ranged weapons. But a bunch of these weapons were not always the most effective, but rather designed not to be recognizable as a weapon at all. This applies, for example, to the war fan Tessin or to the hiking staff Joe, both of which were very inconspicuous. The Kama was a widely used tool with a short handle and a sickle that was used to cut rice or sugarcane and therefore did not attract much attention either, but it would probably not be the best weapon in a fight. Since a ninja chose his equipment specifically for each mission, he would certainly not take such weapons into an inevitable fight. He wouldn't even appear for the fight, but we have to ignore that for this comparison. Shinobi had access to firearms such as the Tanagashima, but such weapons only came into existence in the late 16th century, which is why we use a Shinobi before that time for our comparison. In the fight against a gladiator, Shuruken would certainly be very practical, since they could be used effectively at a distance of up to 15 meters. In addition, you could poison the blades and easily carry up to 9 pieces with you in the inside pocket. A Hankyu should also be quite effective in our scenario. That was a small bow which you could easily transport. The short sword Ninjato would be very suitable for close combat, or the Kusari Gama, a rice sickle with a chain and weight attached to the end of it. A weapon that a gladiator would not expect would be a Metsubushi. In the eggshells was a powder of ash, sand, iron filings, and nettle hair that could take the enemy's vision, in the worst case, even forever. So both opponents have interesting weapons, what about defense? The different types of gladiators also have completely different sets of armor. The Retarius is the least protected gladiator because he only has arm protection on the left side and a metal shield on the shoulder. The Equus was already much better protected because, in addition to arm protection, he also wore a helmet and carried a small shield. A Hoplomachus also had a helmet, arm protection and a small round shield, but also bandages and greaves to protect the lower half. Thraax had the same armor, but a larger arched shield. The Skizzer can block enemy attacks with his armored forearm, but he also wears arm protection, a helmet, and chainmail or scale armor, but in return, he also had to do without a shield. By far the most protected gladiators are Mermillo, Secutor, and Provocator, and that's because of their large rectangular shield which could protect their entire body while the sword arm was armored as well. The Provocator even had a breastplate and was, in my opinion, the best equipped gladiator. 
The armor of a shinobi, on the other hand, was rather bad and in many cases completely non-existent. Their clothing was similar to that of the samurai, but without the armor, and loose fabric was held by belts or tied together. Underneath, they could wear light arm guards and greaves that did not restrict their movement or attract attention. Often, ninja also wore their enemies' clothing to make it easier for them to act as assassins, saboteurs, and spies. However, since a shinobi was never looking for an open fight, he didn't need a shield of armor, which is of course a major disadvantage in our hypothetical fight against a gladiator. Some ninja are said to have worn Kusari Katabira, which is very thin and light full-body chain armor that could also be hidden under clothing. The rings are small and filigree, but still offer much more protection than the normal combat clothing of the ninja. Slaves, prisoners of war, or criminals served as supplies for the gladiatorial battles. If they were unlucky, they were thrown to beasts to get eaten or had to fight without armor against professional gladiators, but with a little luck, they also ended up in a gladiator school. Free Romans could also join there, but then they would lose their civil rights. These schools not only taught the use of weapons by experienced instructors, but also trained the muscles that, according to the ancient physician Galen, were developed without any boundaries. In addition to food, the gladiators were even given nutritional supplements that should increase their calcium levels. After their struggles and injuries and training, they were also treated by a gladiator doctor. Gladiators only had to fight one to three times a year, and were well cared for the rest of the time and could train a lot. The training of a ninja started much earlier because they were born into the profession through their family with traditions and techniques that were passed on from generation to generation. Already at the age of five, the balance was trained through exercises on bamboo poles. Later, they learned the basics of weaponless fighting and then how to use the sword and staff. In the further course, special weapons were added, but learning the art of espionage was even more important. A ninja needed to know how to sneak into enemy castles and gather information, and how to cause as much damage and chaos as possible afterwards, for example, by arson. It was equally important to manipulate people, to deceive them, and win their trust. Basically, ninja were a mix of secret agents and special forces. However, a human being cannot master an unlimited number of skills, and a spy, saboteur, and assassin will probably not be able to compete in close combat with soldiers who mainly train for combat. As you can see, ninja were trained spies with many different abilities, while the gladiators focused on fighting with weapons. Therefore, in fair fights on the battlefield, the ninja have quite a disadvantage compared to all soldiers. But the fight against gladiators remains exciting because these special warriors were not designed for maximum effectiveness, but should offer the spectators an exciting fight. Gladiators were sometimes famous stars that could not be easily replaced, and their maintenance was of course not cheap. Therefore, 80% of the fights were not fatal. The equipment of the gladiators was also distributed in such a way that certain classes could fight each other well, so that the crowd had fun in the arena and not to be as strong as possible. For this reason, the duel between these different fighters is still fair, despite the different tasks. Ninja with ranged weapons like Shuriken and the Hankyu would have very good chances against a poorly armored gladiator like Retarius, who didn't even have a helmet and whose upper body and legs were easy targets for throwing stars and arrows. Disarming the agile ninja with the net would also be very difficult. Long range combat would be much tougher against the Skizzer, as he wore armor which protected his upper body. However, his legs are still vulnerable, and despite the cool look, his metal tube with the blade is just not a particularly good weapon in my opinion. Nevertheless, the Skizzer would be my favorite in this fight because his armor can protect him well against most weapons of the Shinobi, and beside the Crescent Blade, he also had a short sword. Fighting an Equus would be pretty difficult. A mounted opponent is, of course, a great danger, and with his lance, he can also hit a little further distance, for example, if the ninja tries to avoid his onslaught. Knocking the rider off the horse is also not easy with the arms of a ninja. A Kagiyari could be useful here, and used like a halberd to pull the gladiator off the horse. In this unprotected moment, it would be possible to eliminate the Equus. But you have to get him off the horse first, which will be extremely difficult for a ninja who of course doesn't do this on a regular basis. The Hoplomachus had bandages on the legs and a sword arm that would protect him from shuriken, but his torso was unprotected and his shield was extremely small. But I think his quick attacks with the lance and his mobility would probably be too much for an unarmored ninja. 
The most effective gladiators in fighting a shinobi would probably be those with large shields like a Mermillo, Secutor, Thrayax, and Provocator. Their huge shields together with greaves, helmet, and arm protection make them completely invulnerable from the front for most weapons of a ninja. With a Kosari Gama, you could get behind the shield and cause damage, but to do this, you have to get pretty close to your opponent. A ninja would have to fight such better armored opponents with extreme patience and caution, and should not come too close to them. With his agility, he can run away from them and, from a distance, try to hit the few weak spots with poison throwing stars. Of course, this should prove difficult due to the large shields. With Hishi or Tetsubishi, he could cut them off or slow them down, since gladiators only had sandals that didn't offer much protection. Blinding powder could also help a little to worsen the gladiator's view, which is already restricted by the helmet anyway, to get behind them and attack their unprotected areas. Victory for the ninja is not impossible, but it will be very difficult and requires good preparation and the right weapons and additional equipment. I would say that the gladiator wins in 8 out of 10 cases. Only the particularly less armored gladiators have a low chance of victory in my opinion. The ninja's chances of success increase, however, if he does not fight his opponent in an open area, but in a forest, for example. The limited field of vision and reduced mobility of the armored gladiators is a major disadvantage here, and a ninja could get into better positions by climbing or hiding to surprise his opponent. The chances of a ladder ninja from the 16th or 17th century with access to firearms would increase again. With two loaded pistols, he could easily defeat the unarmored gladiators, but with a little bit of luck, the protected classes might even be able to survive this attack. The famous Daimyo Oda Nobunaga survived the attack of a ninja who fired two arquebus at him because his armor slowed down the bullets. Pretty fascinating, but who do you think would win? Do you agree with my view, or am I completely wrong on this? Write it in the comments. Until next time, bye!